We end tonight where we began with John Lewis and another leader of the civil rights movement. C.T. Vivian and Lewis died on the same day. To many who knew and revered both, the coincidence may feel providential. We know the pictures of Lewis's heroism and dignity on the Edmund Pettus Bridge and at the March on Washington. But Lewis and Vivian began their walk toward freedom earlier in 1959 in Nashville, Tennessee, where they met James Lawson and learned lessons in Gandhi's nonviolent direct action. Lewis, Vivian, and others staged sit-ins in Nashville. The goal was not securing the vote, but eating undisturbed at a lunch counter. This was among the earliest civil rights battles, and there weren't nearly as many cameras as later there would be. What was there? Risk, abuse, hatred. Lewis was arrested, something he did not fear. The sit-ins led to the Freedom Rides, the March on Washington, the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act. Lewis and Vivian marched together, faced violence, did not strike back, and helped change America for good. Together in life, together amid strife, and at the end, almost poetically, together once again. I'm trying to preface my words here. In light of the deaths of these two gentlemen, Hello everyone, welcome to an another, another edition of Gavin Richard Presents here only on my channel GBOO2786 on YouTube, whoever you are, wherever you are. I hope you are blessed and doing safe right now. Um, guys, as you already know, uh, some of you may know it's been blowing up all on social media on Friday. The uh, world is mourning the loss of two quote-unquote civil rights icons. Um, of course, you have to the right... Uh, congressman out of Atlanta, uh, Representative John Lewis, who lost his battle to pancreatic cancer at the age of 80. And to the left is a man by the name of C.T. Vivian, Reverend C.T. Vivian, who passed away of natural causes at the age of 95 years old. And the reason why I said I was going to preface my comments was due to the fact that I, um, I have my issues uh, I have my issues with uh, Representative John Lewis. And other than getting his ass whipped at Selma, I don't know anything else that the man has done personally. Um, you know, this is a guy, you know, and you know about Selma because that's all John Lewis talked about practically. You know, when you saw him giving speeches, I gave up my blood on that bridge in Selma, you know. I marched on Selma. Dr. King and I, we, Dr. King and Ralph Abernathy, we marched on Selma. That's all we heard. You know, um, and Jason Black, of course, he went in on John Lewis uh, earlier today and talked about what he didn't specifically do for black, the black community. I don't want to make it this type of video as of now. I have my criticism of John Lewis, and I don't believe personally he was effective as a congressman. However... I do acknowledge that he was a part of history. I do acknowledge that, yes, he was in the civil rights movement in the 1960s. Um, and I respect him in that regard. I respect the bravery of all those men and women that marched up uh, on the bridge, Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, so that they could fight for the right to vote. I respect that. After that is where it's different for me. I don't want to make it this type of show, so I'm just going to say, you know, obviously what, and I'm saying what a lot of young black people feel, especially those that have studied history that know that even 50 years after that incident, remember our Voting Rights Act was still up at the floor of Congress to be overturned. And part of it was overturned by the Supreme Court in 2013, a five to four decision in which Anthony Kennedy was the swing vote. He's always he's always been the swing vote uh, in these key decisions. He was the swing vote for repealing the Defense of Marriage Act. He was the swing vote in the Hoberfeld decision that gave gays the right to marry. You know, he's always been a swing vote. He was a swing vote that got George Bush the election in 2000. You know, it's always him, but I'm getting off topic. 
you know. Uh, so, in that regard, yes, I'm I'm only doing this out of respect. You know, I, I can have my criticisms of him, but of course, since he just passed away, I won't go in deep for now, out of respect to him and his family. I do want to talk about the gentleman on the left because this gentleman was actually one of Dr. King's most trusted lieutenants in C.T. Vivian. And Mr. Vivian also is a native of Atlanta. And your Mr. Vivian uh, was, as we said, was one of Dr. King's lieutenants. He lived to be 95 years old, so that is a long, prosperous life. Now, your Mr. Vivian who is a reverend, and I, sh I should call him Reverend Vivian, excuse me, I say Mr., but uh, he's a reverend, he was a, uh, you know, he founded the C.T. Vivian Leadership Institute, he was a member of Alpha Phi Alpha, uh, which was Dr. King's um, fraternity as well. Uh, you know, he, both of uh, these individuals also see, received the Congressional uh, was we'll saw the presidential uh, honor for award for freedom in two one respectively in 2013 Mr. Vivian Presidential Medal of Freedom and I believe John Lewis received uh, his in 2011 uh, you know he was a distinguished author and organizer uh, he also helped uh, various HBCUs uh, he founded that institute, the C.T. Vivian Leadership Institute, in Atlanta, Georgia, that was conceived, developed, and implemented the Yes We Care campaign on December 18, 2008, after the city of Atlanta turned the water off at Morris Brown College. And over a period of two and a half months, he mobil they mobilized the Atlanta community to donate in excess of $500,000 directly to Morris Brown as bridge funding. That effort saved the HBCU and allowed the college to negotiate with the city, which ultimately rest restored the water services to the college. So, uh, big up to him for that. Uh, he also, of course, participated in various demonstrations and marches and protests, I believe, uh, in 1960, April 19, 1960. 4,000 demonstrators uh, peacefully walked to Nashville City Hall where both Diane Nash, she's a, uh, you guys should look her up, but she was actually uh, really involved in the uh, civil rights movement, uh, still alive actually, and her husband was James Bevel. Uh, they, a strong part of the civil rights movement, she was also a part of Selma and various organizations, but uh, they organized a walk to Nashville City Hall. And the mayor, mayor West, uh, the mayor of Nashville at that time, he agreed publicly that racial discrimination was wrong. Duh. And many of those uh, Nashville's, many of those students that participated with the Nashville student movement that Mr. Vivian was a part of, they became members in, uh, of, the, of SNCC as well as the SCLC, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And he found, helped found the Nashville Christian Leadership Conference. He organized the first sit-ins in Nashville. Uh, I believe Mr. Uh, Vivian, Minister Vivian, I keep saying min uh, Mr., but min Ms. Minister Vivian also participated in the first sit-in demonstrations in Peoria, Illinois, home of Richard Pryor, the comedy legend, and those demonstrations successfully integrated Barton's Cafeteria in 1947. So uh, Mr. Vivian was born in Boonville, Missouri, and as a small boy, he immigrated, migrated up there, up to Macomb, Illinois. Uh, so that was in 1940, in the 19, early 1940s, it seems. 1942, he graduated from Macomb High School. Uh, John Lewis, of course, he's actually from Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. John Lewis is was born in uh, Troy, Alabama. So, you know, these three, uh, these two individuals, uh, and John Lewis also was one of the uh, 
organizers or part well not an organizer but he's one the chairman of SNCC and those groups were part of the big six that led to the March on Washington in which he gave uh, a speech as well uh, that was in August of 1963 so as far as it goes with history and the work that they did, I'm talking about in the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, I'm not going to talk about John Lewis some more as a congressman. I think we can save that for a later, a little bit of a later date. That's just for me. I know if you go on um, the Black Authorities channel, they're going hard on it. <laughs> but I still respect the work that they did early on in the Civil Rights struggle, just, uh, you know, organizing the March on Washington and so forth, but also the sit-ins and boycotts and demonstrations that they were a part of, uh, especially Mr. Viv Reverend, uh, Reverend Vivian. Um, I will say, uh, I will say when I look at Atlanta though, and I know that they were running for uh, re-election, uh, by they I mean John Lewis and his crew, they were trying to get him re-elected again which I knew was going to be difficult with him having an illness. And you have Angela Stratton King, who, or Angela King Stratton, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is that her name, who is uh, running for Con John Lewis's seat. You know, that might make it a little easy. This may, and I hate to say that, but, you know, I wonder if this is going to make it a little easier for her. Because I've heard things about Atlanta right now it's Angela Stanton King sorry I've heard things about Atlanta right now about how they're in on Peachtree which is the main street in downtown Atlanta how they're under the and people can correct me if I'm wrong but even under the interstates there's a whole bunch of homeless people that are living under there and you wonder where are the politicians speaking up about that? I, people that live in Atlanta, what is your mayor saying about that? What did John Lewis do about it? You know, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying not to go there and be respectful, but his record speaks for itself, and people should do an honest look at the records because we can't, in this battle, necessarily uh, be politically correct all the time if we want to win. We got to actually come out and be and stand for the truth. The truth wins out at the end of the day. As painful as it may be for some, the truth is the truth at the end of the day. And I would prefer the truth that will shed a tear rather than a lie that's going to crack a smile. You know, we've actually done, I think, more in the last two months than many of these politicians, especially in the Congressional Black Caucus, have done in 20, 30 years. I'm looking at, uh, if you look at the AP report on John Lewis's uh, timeline, they gave a timeline of events in John Lewis's life. The first thing they start off with is where he was born. They talk about um, excuse me, I'm sorry. They talk about where he was born. They talk about uh, his election to Congress. John Lewis has been uh, a congressperson for oh, well over 32 years. The first time he was elected into Congress was in 1986. I was a baby in 1986. I wasn't even born. I was just born when he became a state uh, a, uh, congressional representative, I'm about to say state, a congressional representative in 1986. So from 1986 up until 2020 when he just passed, he was a congressperson for over 34 years. A congressperson uh, can be elected multiple times and of course their terms only last for two years apiece where I believe senators, congressional senators we're talking about they last for a period of six years. So they actually do, uh, they last longer than a state representative. 
But 32 years is a long time. 32 years, you know, 20 years is damn short sure of time if you're in any government job or any position where you could qualify automatically for retirement. If you join the military and you do 20 years active, you can retire after your 20th, when your 20th year starts. Once you make that 20th anniversary, you can retire. So damn near John Lewis was a career politician, and you guys know how I feel about career politicians, but nevertheless, I respect, as I stated earlier, uh, the work as far as being in the civil rights movement. And so I will say rest in peace of co uh, to both John Lewis and to Reverend C.T. Vivian. Uh, my condolences to their families. Uh, I Just because I'm critical of John Lewis, that doesn't mean that I don't have a heart and that I, of course, wish that I wish death on someone. I don't. I'm not that type of person. So, having said all of that, this is it for me, guys. Uh, you feel free to leave a comment in the description. Also, uh, feel free, please, donate to this channel. I stress this all the time. You can donate in the uh, links below in the description. You guys have a blessed and safe night, and perhaps maybe in a few weeks or so, or a little bit less than that, we can go in more about this subject. But uh, until then, rest easy. Good night, guys.